I never decided to be a photographer, it just was. I think photography chose me rather than the other way around. But that's the way it is with most things, isn't it? My grandmother bought me a camera when I was seven for it must have been Christmas. And from then on, you know, I, you know, of course you had to buy film and you had to have it processed and I could only buy or process film if I had money, so you're always scrounging around trying to earn some money so you could buy the next roll of film or have it processed. The military gave me the opportunity to travel many places that I would not have otherwise had the opportunity to go, and most people really don't have a desire to go, but it was an interesting education. They sent me to Saudi Arabia where photography was not legal for people who are not from Saudi Arabia. It was a much different culture. There was all these amazing scenes that you really were not supposed to photograph. I did have a camera with me. So I did sneak a few photographs here and there. I take pictures of anything that catches my eye. I have a, what you would call it a gift or perhaps a curse in that I see photographs. I see photographs all the time. Most people think photography is very easy. You just show up and push a button. I, I, you know, I find that's not really the case. Photography is, is as easy or as hard as you want it to be. The harder you make it, I think the better the photography. I'm always trying to ca calculate the best time of day to take a given photograph. For example, at the Stav Church, you know, the, the sunlight comes straight through the, the stained glass above the altar at, at certain times on certain days of the year, and I just made sure I was there. And primarily, I wanted to throw color on the floor, you know, from the stained glass, from the sunlight hitting, going through the stained glass and laying, you know, putting color on the floor. So I arranged to be there on a day and a time when I knew the sun would be coming straight through the sun, you know, basically mid-January because the sun's low in the sky and, and so forth. But yeah, I, I, I worked pretty hard at it. People say photography is you know, free and easy and if that's the case, then I do it wrong. You know, the thing about photography is there's always a great, amazing, you know, museum-worthy photograph anywhere you are, really any time that you are, it's just a matter of finding it. One of my heroes was William Eggleston, who said he was at war with the ordinary, and he took these amazing photographs of just ordinary, everyday uh, situations, you know, shoes under a bed, you know, a light bulb, you know, bare light bulb on a ceiling, you know, for example. You know, how would you make that interesting? And, and William Eggleston did. Robert Frank, the Americans who, he traveled across the country just taking photographs of ordinary Americans that ordinary, doing ordinary things. And that's largely what I do. Well, the, the, the church project got started uh, because of the sesquicentennial for the county, which is coming up shortly. And, it, and the Kennewai County Historical Society wanted to do something that would represent the entirety of the county and the various disparate cultures and factions that make up the county. And so I, I think the decision was made to focus on churches because churches are a cross-section of the entire uh, county from the mosque in Wilmer to some of these old churches and the stories that these old churches have, like Calvary or, or Vinji or Bethel, and it, it, it's an amazing story. It's a story worthy of being told. And for me as a photographer, well, I get to go to these beautiful, amazing places and meet these wonderful people. And I've, it's been a, a, a journey for me to travel all across the county. And I've been to most churches at least three times and some more than that.
If you looked at the pictures chronologically, they wouldn't necessarily make sense. I'm always assuming I'm going to get kicked out at any second, you know, and I have been actually at a couple of, a couple of times. So I always go for the mo what I feel are the most important photographs first. You know, I'll shoot down the aisle and several locations down the, the center aisle, and then from the corners and from the viewpoint of the altar back and from the balcony if if there's a balcony available to shoot from. But generally, some of the churches, there are over a hundred finished photographs of the, of the church that, I've, you know, that I have supplied to the Historical Society. And those are all on file. If someone wants to see them, they can go to the Historical Society and ask to see them, and they'd be happy to show them. We have all these churches and all these different points of view in, in just this little county alone. Uh, and it's the diversity and the, and the diversity in both the approach to faith and, and the approach to architecture, you know, is, uh, is very amazing and heartening. And, and I think that's, this, you know, kind of in some ways the story of this country. We're a melting, you know, they say we're a melting pot, more of a, of a, of a stew, really. But you have all of these different points of view and they're all represented in the architecture and in the faith expressed, and, and we all manage to get along most of the time, so. <laughs> but, you know, it also goes to, you know, mutual respect. The Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, they provided a grant for the project. And so they're currently hosting a gallery exhibit through the end of June of the photographs from some of the, of the churches. We didn't print all of them because it's just, financially, it's just not feasible to do. Photography, you know, is a uh, is a passport in a lot of ways to a lot of places that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily go. It also, uh, Diane Arbus, I, th I believe it was, was the person who said a, a camera is a device who, that teaches you to see without a camera, and it's it is in some ways true because you you're more I think aware of uh, of what goes on in, in some ways. The beauty in the everyday I, is is something I think is a gift and most people are too busy running from one place to another and they miss that beautiful sunset. Visit pioneer.org slash postcards to catch up on missed episodes and to find out more about your favorite segments. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropy, Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org, Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org.